The law of conservation of energy says that in non-nuclear processes, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. And non-nuclear processes will cover all chemical reactions um, that we will work with in CHEM 400 and CHEM 401. Uh, although at the end of CHEM 401, we oftentimes talk about nuclear processes. Now, while matter, sorry, while energy can neither be created nor destroyed, it can be converted from one form into the other. For example, potential energy can be converted into kinetic energy. And as an example, if you had a ball that was on the top of a cliff and that cliff had a height h, and uh, the potential energy of that ball would be mass times gravity times height. And this is a formula that you might have seen in your physics classes. Uh, M is mass in kilograms to make the units work out. G is gravity, 9.8 meters per second. Uh, sorry, 9.8 meters per second squared, actually. And height is in meters, such that when we multiply these together, we get kilogram meter, oh, sorry, I should say height in meters, uh, kilogram meters squared per second squared, which is also a joule. So we'll get joules when we use this equation. And if we were to allow this ball, push it off of the cliff, it would fall, it would get a velocity. And velocity or movement is kinetic energy. And we can, um, uh, we're showing that we can convert potential energy into kinetic energy. You can also, uh, as the ball hits and breaks into many pieces at the bottom, that would be changing the potential energy. So it can, can, kinetic energy can be converted into potential energy as well. Now, energy scales are always arbitrary. There are no absolute values of energy, and we will always measure changes in energy. What does that mean for us? Well, it means that uh, when you use uh, H as the enthalpy, truly the definition of, uh, or U, two of the energy terms that we've used, U, the internal energy, and H, the uh, enthalpy. So it is impossible to know the internal energy in absolute terms, meaning based upon zero. And since enthalpy is based on H, so uh, you will never see in our classes or anywhere as, a, as far as I know, calculations of these two variables. So cannot calculate. What we can calculate and what we will calculate multiple times is delta H. Delta H, and we might put a naught here and we might put reaction there. So this is going to be the change in uh, the naught up top or the zero means standard state. So this is going to be change in enthalpy of reaction at standard conditions. And it will always be that you calculate delta H, not reaction, as uh, the delta H, not of the products. 
minus delta H naught of the reactants. Because everything we do, at least in chemistry and most things, is final state, which in a chemical reaction will be the products, minus initial state. Just like whenever we calculate temperature changes, it's always T final minus T initial, and uh, T, uh, basically everything, uh, V uh, final minus V initial, V2 minus V1, if you will. Um, furthermore, we can say a couple other things, and we'll do some calculations coming up of energy, and that energy, it, it doesn't mention it specifically, but technically it's always a change in energy. And so look for that, think about it, because you can really think about when we do uh, our calculations of energy, what is the initial state and what is the final state, because it will be part of what we're doing. So we can only calculate changes in energy and measure changes in energy. Now, one blank will raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. That's a calorie. The dietary calorie is actually one kilocalorie. That's what kcal stands for, or 1,000 calories. An average adult, young adult spend, expends about 1,800 kcalories per day just to stay alive. What you'll see is that the USDA allowance is 1,800 big C calories. Well, actually, between 1,800 and 2,000 calories with a capital C. They're really kilocalories compared to chemistry. So, but 1,800 seems like enough calories, big C calories for people to eat in their food, I guess. I don't know. Um, one, uh, or the watt is a unit of power, which measures the rate of energy flow in joules per second. Thus the watt hour is a unit of energy. And, um, for example, perhaps in your electricity bills, you've seen the kilowatt hour. The kilowatt hour is a number of joules because you've taken the watts turn them into kilowatts, true, but then multiply it times the hours, which gets rid of the second part. And really you're being billed for the amount of joules that you use.